I was introduced to you um, on UFC cassettes. You know, uh, Video Smith used to rent out free sports tapes on Wednesdays. So the UFC and wrestling was all in that, in that row. So every Wednesday I'd have my dad take me over and uh, I needed him to be able to rent the UFC tapes. Um, so I remember that logo as a kid. That was one of my first memories, man. So I was able to follow you on UFC and then seeing you on, on WWE meant, meant a lot to me to be able to see you uh, just transition to more of an active like storytelling role. Um, my first question for you, I want to take you back to the younger you or maybe the earlier part of your life. Um, what, what were some of your earliest experiences with uh, maybe expressing yourself, maybe outside of wrestling or outside of uh, you know mixed martial arts or martial arts? Yeah, as far as um, experience and, and uh, knowledge and stuff like that, when I first started out fighting, it was more uh, I got to become somebody. I became relevant. Before I was going to college, play football, and my direction went into more of the hand-to-hand -hand combat. So for me, it was almost like from where I came from, out on the streets, fighting all the time, getting in trouble, to now actually walking in a ring and be able to fight almost the same way as if I was on the street, and they were gonna pay me for it. I didn't have to worry about getting arrested or any of that stuff. So for me, it was a thrill and it was a relief that I could actually do something that made me feel good and that I was really good at, it. and that was No Holes Barred MMA. Man, so in terms of your relationship with the audience, um, you know, what can you tell me about the differences between like being a part of uh, you know wrestling and uh, you know UFC? Yeah, you know, uh, back in the day when I did the transition from uh, MMA into pro wrestling, it was really difficult because I know a lot of people thought I sold out. You know, why are you going to that fake stuff? Um, that's not who you are. And I remembered myself going into it, I was like, these people don't really know wrestling that much because wrestling is very difficult and also hard on your body. So it's not fake. So I thought to say, you know what? I'm going to go in and I'm going to change people's minds. So when I went into pro wrestling, um, everybody that was on the MMA side were all going, man, that's a sellout. You shouldn't do that. After one year being in pro wrestling, all those people that were saying that were saying, man, that's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Because wrestling, in my opinion, at that time also changed with me uh, when we became into the Attitude Era. So it was really nice to be a part of that, to be able to help bring that part of wrestling back into the fans, making it cool again. And I think that the uh, Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Steve Austin match, the one that I refereed, really set the tone for that attitude era and for fans to come out of the closet and say, yeah, man, that's cool. Oh, uh, man, you just mentioned a match. That was my first time watching a pay-per-view live. That's a man 13, right? That was it with you, uh, you and uh, Stone, uh, Stone, you were the referee of that match. Um, man, that was a dope memory. Uh, can you give me a cool story about that match? That match was the first time that we had, we had black box. We didn't, uh, my uncle wasn't going to pay for the pay-per-view, but he found a black box. He was like, yo, we're going to watch it. So I was excited because I, I, he had no other way to get me to watch it. Uh, so that's, that match is special to me. Can you give me um, a special uh, a story about that night? Yeah, you know, um, especially when I started fighting, no holds barred, anything goes. I went into the ring and it was like me or him. I go in there, I take somebody out, I walk out, I feel good about it. When I went into pro wrestling, I had a thought in my mind, like, can I really do this? Is this something that I feel like I can do and feel comfortable with it? Do Am I going to feel fake? Is it going to feel right? I can't know if I can sell a punch if it doesn't land, you know? So I had all these thoughts in my head going into Wrestle, WrestleMania, I believe it was 13, when I refereed Bret Hart and Stone Cold, with thoughts in my head like, I don't know how this is going to go, I don't know if it's something I'll be able to do. And after that match, when I refereed that match, those two guys went after each other, man. I mean, I see Bret hit Stone Cold, Stone Cold literally flew around his head, and I was like, okay. Now, this isn't what I expected, but this is what I can do because they literally went after one another. They beat each other up. And when I refereed that match, it was almost like I was refereeing an MMA match. I mean, these guys really went after one another. It was really well done, and so I was very proud to be a part of that match and to be able, I think, in my, in my mind, and I think in a lot of other people's mind, I believe that was the match that really changed pro wrestling from bringing uh, closet watchers to people standing outside, coming out saying, I watch pro wrestling because it's cool. Oh man, lastly, um, I'm a diehard Bret Hart fan. You may, I can, I can I get your thoughts and opinion on uh, Bret Hart as a person or as a, as a professional? Well, when you talk about, you know, talking so, as, as, a, as a person uh, outside the entertainment world, the fight world, Usually you don't know people all that well, but from what I know of Brett, 
and the time that I've spent with him. He seems like a really confident individual, a nice person that would do things for people if they needed it, and, uh, and as far as I'm, I know, a really good father. So for me, uh, outside the ring, Brett was a stand-up guy, genuinely good person. So you've been in the industry for so long. What would you tell kids today who want to have a job like you or any type of job in the industry? Yeah, if, if, especially today with the young kids growing up, and, and no matter what sport it is, uh, first thing I'd always say is make sure you have an exit plan. You know, you can't expect to go into a professional sport as hard as it is and be able to stay healthy for a long period of time. It's very difficult for, it's 1% of people make it to that top. So I would always tell young kids coming up is make sure you have an exit plan, get an education, make sure you have something that you can do if, God forbid, something happens to you and you're not able to pursue your career. Shamrock, thank you so much, man, appreciate it.